Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. Sunday night, it is hot in the shop, but it's going to heat up fast this week, so trying to get things taken care of. Uh, this is uh, some stuff that's come in recently I've needed to get cranked out, and interestingly enough, as best I recall, this will be KC Tool Hall 16, and it is a one-trick pony. Uh, this is literally a situation, this was Tool of the Day. Uh, with all these flyers, all this time, I think since uh, back around Thanksgiving, every single time we'd get these Vera flyers, whether it was spring, Christmas, whatever, I'd always kind of highlight the Joker and say, hey, you know, I'm waiting to try these out. If anyone's used them, let me know. And uh, what I was kind of waiting on was just like a super blowout deal. And that occurs with Tool of the Day. And uh, typically this set right here, which we'll go into what it is in just a second, but it would retail roughly like 135 bucks. Uh, KC Tool typically sells it for around 115, somewhere in that range. I can't exactly remember if I paid 64.99 or like 69.99, but somewhere between 65 and 70 dollars, I was able to get this. That's roughly half price off of list. And that, to me, was the green light to go ahead and check it out, see what we think of them, uh, see if they're worth bringing in, if we like them better, if we don't like them as well as other things we've got. And it worked out well because this is a four-piece set. <laughs> for everyone that rags on me for always doing SAE or Imperial stuff, this is metric. Uh, the only ratcheting metric wrenches I have are the Viha ones over there that we brought in recently. They've been good to me so far. Uh, but literally all I've done is a couple of 10 and 13 millimeter bolts, so I haven't really had time for a failure. I just know that they work and they haven't self-destructed. So before we jump into this, I believe this was the bit that came with it. This is number 12 of 24. Uh, this bit of things is V-House part number 71564. This is a T15 by 25 millimeter Torx titanium coated insert bit so uh, once again i'll get that list eventually up on the forum i just haven't had a ton of time here as of late and since this is i debated whether to call this a tool haul or just to call it like a review of these but the problem is if i call anything a review and we don't use them or haven't used them uh, people get really really mad and then if you use like initial impressions they still make the same argument uh, and instead of wasting my time uh, going through and schooling people or deleting comments or whatever, uh, we're just going to go with, go about it as a tool haul. And since we've got extra time, since it's the only item, we're going to go ahead and combine the catalog with it. Because again, that's, uh, that's kind of going to be the style we can go for. There is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, it was not bit number 12. Uh, you can just take that one with a grain of salt. We got 23 of 24 here. This is going to be the number 2 by 50. I think we've had that one before. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about it because it will see a lot of use. So uh, my apologies there again when this stuff kind of stacks up on me. I sort of lose track of what came in with what if you follow my drift. Vera's packaging though is super, super nice. Now sometimes you don't always get like the retail pack. Like if you were to walk into a store in the Czech Republic, it's probably what you would see. Uh, super impressive, sleek, modern, uh, not enough good things you can really say about it. And then on top of that, you get some pretty interesting textiles with it as well. Now, before we jump too far ahead, I want to showcase we've got our little Vera Tool Rebels. These are kind of hard to come by if you never get this. Oftentimes on KC Tool, you'll have an option for like standard packing or retail packing. If you want these stickers, I know some of you collect them, try to opt for the retail version and you should start accruing some of these. Uh, might cost a little bit more, but again, if you're a sticker person, it's probably worth it. I uh, got a Velcro patch. I guess that's for replacements. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you. Uh, small Vera flyer here. Uh, let's see here. Excluding damage. Okay. Dear customer, please consider that we exclude any liability for damage that may occur as a result from proper use of the enclosed hook and loop fastener. Surface area selected for the attachment of the self-adhesive hook and loop fastener strips is to be checked at an inconspicuous place to ensure that the chosen surface is suitable for this purpose. The surface area to be used in this way will need to be thoroughly cleaned beforehand so that it is free of dust, grease, and other impurities. Secure connection of the hook and loop fasteners is only ensured when the hook and loop fastener functional areas overlap one another optimally. So just kind of to cover their butts there if we want to do something with this Velcro. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know if I will or not. We'll, we'll get into that here shortly. But let's shut that thing 
And take a look at this though. A presentation, presentation, presentation. I tell you, this is over the top. If you thought this was like some dorky little sticker or stitching, this is like a full-on rubber overmold. You can kind of see if it looks like there's a height from the bag to the top of the simulated joker wrench. That's because there is. Uh, it's... <laughs> I have to wonder how much you would save if you didn't get this fancy over-the-top bag. But hey, uh, it is what it is. I cannot complain. This is our joker flyer set here. Uh, so... You inspired Your inspired purchase of the joker by Vera means that you have just acquired a professional ratcheting combination wrench of the very latest generation. The ratcheting combination wrench with a unique jaw can do everything that a wrench, finding English, <laughs> uh, maybe not. Uh, so where where is English? Okay, we're going to be number two here. Practical holding function. And yeah, I'm done with that. Let's let's just get to this stuff, all right? <laughs> so we're going to go in again. One of the reasons I bring those catalogs in. It's not just for my own amusement and for finding future tools to bring in, but it's actually to be able to provide more information in this type of video. That's exactly what we're going to do. But got a full length Velcro right here, and when we flip this over, this is full length above the actual wrench as well. I'm assuming they included that self adhesive stuff so you can kind of like rig something around your belt or a tool pouch. I don't really know, truth be told. I'm going to leave these either in the pouch or loose in the toolbox. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I don't believe it'll be an issue for me. Uh, and as long as the wrenches don't break, I don't care. Now, the way these work, they're stitched pretty nice. This is mesh. I would say that's probably more susceptible to being torn than if we had the same material as the bag. Don't hold me to that. Uh, essentially, with these flaps, I think if instead of the mesh that was there, it would be a little bit longer life cycle. However, I can also say it then wouldn't show off the wrench, which, you know, take your pick there. But this set, 10, 13, 17, and 19, four of the most common, frequently used sizes across the metric scope. And uh, the cool thing here, across Vera's line, they do some really innovative stuff. Some of it's dorky and gimmicky. A lot of it turns out to maintain the dorky and gimmicky nature, but still then be really useful, for example. This yellow, bright, high visible yellow. If you see that, and you say primarily dabble in metric stuff, if you see that on a quarter drive, three eighths, half drive socket, you know yellow means it's 10 millimeter. Uh, same with that sort of like spring seafoam green color, red 17, blue 19. They color coordinate this stuff not to just be cute and extra, but actually because it does provide a practicality. If I had sockets strung out in my drawer on a work or service cart, and I'm like, man, where's the 19 millimeter? If I've got Snap-on, if I've got, you know, Husky, Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh, whatever, some of them do do colors, but Vera makes it very, very solid across the board. If I see that blue, I know, hey, there's my 19 millimeter Vera, and I go to town now. That gets complicated a bit when you have SAE and metric, but let's say you're taking a job at a time, you're working on a 68 Charger, or you're working on a 2016 Volkswagen, you can usually divide up your tool set. You're not going to have a lot of overlap. Essentially makes your life a lot easier. So, uh, tin, let's start there. This is what I was worried about with the Jokers, right? It's kind of got like the cool little Easter egg, kind of ties in with their craft form handles. You know, the design that you can see here on one of the chisel drivers. It's got the bulge, it's got the same profiling, everything along those lines. Pretty well thought out, but my fear was it was going to be fat and cumbersome. That's still a very slim profile. Like, you got to realize, I'm a guy that came from Craftsman. Old school Western Forge Craftsman, right? Uh, 90s era, if you will. Those are some freaking thick wrenches on <laughs> the broader scope of things. And while this is a ratcheting wrench with a couple of extra features, that's not objectionable to me. Now, granted, you know, could you get it stuck in some really tight places? Absolutely, but you can do that with virtually any wrench. Uh, and if you're coming in buying something super, super thin, you are limiting your strength a little bit. But a couple of neat things on the Joker. Number one, you've got your easy to find yellow. You've got the stampings of tin and tin here. When we flip it over, it's the exact same thing. Right here, if you're like, well, what is that weird thing? Why is there that you know brown 
metal doesn't match the you know finish of the wrench there it's not on this side that is actually designed <clears throat> to hold a fastener and what I mean by that you're gonna come in here and if you've ever had a situation where let's say I'm running a new fuel pump you know on a fuel rail underneath the charger if I have a standard wrench and I've got the nut I typically would use the boxed end uh, because it's less likely than the open end to have a situation where it falls out but if I'm over here with this hand passing the bolt through the frame rail this nut is going to constantly come out uh, particularly let's say if it's you know not a flush hole maybe we kind of went down you know four degrees or something you have to tap it through it's kind of a nightmare to get that going with a feature like this that holds your fastener it'll actually stay in place and you can go to town this will be really handy with suspension stuff uh, in the engine bay you know if you're constantly dropping something this would be a, a ticket you could give a go see if it works well for you uh, but there's a lot of times where that would actually kind of be a cool and handy feature. One of the things also which is nice, most of the ratcheting wrenches I have do not have a selector switch. I will tell you, most of what I brought in can be equipped with a selector switch. The price goes up significantly. My reasoning for not necessarily liking the selector switch is while on a ratchet, I can't think of many times I've ever accidentally switched directions or locked down. With a wrench, I'm using it because it's a tighter profile usually, which again, this is where people that want thin wrenches would come in. That selector switch has a profile to it, and if you have anything that's not just offset quite a bit, it's going to be cumbersome, and the body of the wrench is where I would drag. Like if I've got this on, say, a leaf spring perch, we would come in right here and this might be up against the leaf spring and so if we come in and we have the switch it could constantly be getting hit what vera did is something that most others kind of imply but it just shows you the direction of rotation as you can see this one points towards my palm uh, this one points towards the tip of the fingers it kind of tells you which direction you're going to be rotating small detail but a nice touch in my opinion these are not offset at all these are straight <laughs> That is worth noting in my opinion. Uh, if you listen close, what is that you say? That is 82. Is it the finest? Is it the most precise? Absolutely not, but it still feels good. It's still a significant step up uh, from things I've had in my opinion. And the other thing we need to take a look at is the actual open end. If we uh, zoom in on this sucker for you, you can see right there, there's a lot going on. Like my old Craftsman's, the stuff we brought in recently from Hazette and Style Villa, that's always just a smooth finish. There's none of this extra crud, right? <laughs> that sort of looks like a fancy crown nut. And what they've done, uh, some of those husky wrenches I brought in, the flank drives and the capris, they actually sort of have that new style to kind of grip and not round the uh, heads off as bad. This accomplishes all of that, but what they attribute this to is a 30 degree return angle now we're not talking swing arc i could not find a listed swing arc that's what you've heard me you know rave about in the past with the x frames and the capris that's essentially a deal where if i'm tightening and then i have to back off how far down do i have to go and i mean with these you can see it's very very small so that's good again i could not find a published swing arc what I could find published was a return angle for the open end. Now that's usually a deal where, why do I not have anything handy? Um, let's just, we'll go with this, a torque, torque converter bolt, I believe off of a 440. If I was in here and I grabbed this and we just completed the turn, I can't just ratchet my open end up, right? I've got to come back and grab it. And it's usually, you know, 90 degrees or better, depending on what size and style of fashion you're using. The way they've done all that work in the open end, they say you can achieve a 30 degree return, which is pretty significant if you're using the open end quite a bit. But uh, that is sort of the bread and butter of this wrench. Let's back her out for you. And I gotta say, I am excited to use these. This one will be the first one I'll use because I've got to uh, mess with a coolant tank I've just picked up. And it's got a hidden 10 millimeter that there's absolutely no way to use a socket on because of a stupid oversight in engineering i must say 13 millimeter right here's kind of got our spring green sounds good again we'll grab our biggest one as well uh, it's got the vera branding joker right there vera and joker sort of like a laser etch i assume 
not on the back side, but hey, you know, that's fine by me. I will slide this one back down. I will say it was a little cumbersome to get that back in there. It is tight though, and I think part of the reason it's cumbersome for me, I've got a camera tripod here that you can't see that greatly impedes my ability to do the most simplistic of tasks on this workbench. 17, we're stepping up quite nicely. Uh, in size, and there's like a super holy light shining down on that sucker too. <laughs> but, uh, the other thing, and it's really just coming into play here, this gives my thumb a natural position to rest all the time. Like at work, I've got some really old Mac and Proto wrenches, and they've held up great. But whenever I'm coming in and I'm bearing down on something, you know, up close, kind of getting it started, I'm always here. And then, of course, later on, I'm at the back end of the wrench where I want it to be comfortable with a radius. But up front, I love that that is a recess. That's one of the things I was bragging about on the Jokers before we ever even brought them in. Uh, but there's our 17, and the big daddy, at least, of this set, the 19 millimeter. This is a pretty big wrench, and it's not quite as heavy as one would think it would be. Again, direction of rotation there. The blue strip goes all the way around. Actually, it doesn't. It's only on the front sides. That could be improved upon. I'm not sure what their logic is, but honestly, if you had this in a rack or a foam tray, perhaps, from another set that you drop these into, it would be cool if that stripe, the color system, actually did extend 360 degrees around that. So that would be my first real complaint we found. But again, these feel really good in hand. Uh, they've got a nice matte finish, sort of like you come to expect from Vera. And you can see that detail that I'm talking about on that open end a little bit better there. So what I will do now is come in and we're going to use the catalog. And, uh, this isn't a sales pitch necessarily, this is just if you're watching this, I can only assume, particularly if you're still here, you are interested in learning about the Joker. And I can do that best through their own terminologies. So this guy right here is very proud of that 19 millimeter, as you can see. Uh, but we've got the standard wrenches on 228, 230. They do have a lever switch. Will I bring those in? I don't think so, and that's because the price is a significant increase. So, uh, right here, let's just play, let's read the catalog. So, Joker open ended wrenches. When we began to think about open ended wrenches, we asked ourselves, why does the wrench always have to be flipped over? Which they technically didn't change in terms of the ratcheting side with these. I guess with the lever, yes. But, uh, why does it have an offset design? Why does it slip off injuring fingers? The new design of the mouth resulted in a real joker that works even when all other trumps have been played. So there you can kind of see the profile right there on the holding function. The joker's holding function means that nuts and bolts can be held in the jaw and easily positioned where they are needed. Fastening on the thread can then be done quickly and safely thanks to the innovative special stop plate which holds the fastener. That would be that sort of brown highlighted piece you see there. And again, I'm reading it because that way you don't have to worry about a glare. So, no more time wasting searches for dropped nuts and bolts. After applying and positioning the nut or bolt, fastening can begin immediately. No additional tools required. Constant repositioning of the wrench, difficulty holding fasteners in confined spaces, easing off to avoid any risks of injury or fastener damage, that was yesterday. Today the Joker prevents slipping off of the fastener head with its integrated limited stop. No longer is the thumb needed to act as a depth stop. This makes applications much easier and allows significantly... Ha! Ah, you see that there? I should be hired on as an editor. Last I knew, there was no space between Signifa and Kintley. <laughs> but uh, hey, going, you know, from Czech to English, it's, that's a very minor thing, and it's spelled correctly. Constantly, or significantly, more force to be applied during fastening jobs. Uh, right here, this inset picture, the Joker's clever double hex geometry delivers a very positive connection with nuts or bolts. It's a perfect fit. And the exchangeable hardened metal gripping plate in the Joker's mouth literally bites itself into the bolt with its extremely hard tips. Both features combine to prevent slipping even at higher torque. Now that 30 degree uh, return angle, not swing arc, but return angle, that's referencing only the open end. Instead of 60 degrees, which is a typical standard, the Joker only has a 30 degree return angle thanks to its unique double hex design. Along with the Joker's straight neck, this means that flipping the wrench has become a thing of the past. 
With the Joker, you can now loosen and tighten nuts and bolts in situations where conventional tools fail, particularly confined spaces, where conventional open jaws wrenches cannot be used. The combination of limit stop and small return angles enables effective EFF space active right there work even on screw pipe connections. So again, a hex, six sides, 360 degrees in a circle of the fastener, regardless of the head size, 60 per side. Essentially, you know, the best case scenario with your wrench, you would have to come off, rotate up 60 degrees. Oftentimes, it's a pain you wind up going, you know, much farther than that just to get a clean insert. They're claiming 30 degrees, which is a pretty significant deal. Ratcheting end right here again, not setting the world on fire, but I think it's more than sufficient. Uh, 80 teeth, the ratcheting feature at the ring end boasts an exceptional fine tooth mechanism, 80 teeth in all, which provides greater flexibility even in confined workspaces. Now flipping it over, this is kind of cool because with the catalog, this is something like you can't find when you're buying this. KC tool, Amazon, you could go through and reverse engineer it. Typically, any retailer, they're going to have a picture of one wrench and they're just going to throw it up. If you wanted specifically a 13 millimeter, it might be the 10 millimeter pictured and you're not going to know the colors, things along those lines. And so right here, we've got the uh, metric set. We're going to start at 8 millimeter, go all the way to 19, and there's no overlap of colors. Again, this is what's so cool with their hex keys. If you use hex keys frequently or torques or whatever, anything along those lines, that's why I raved about it. I'm coming from the Craftsman tool set that's a bag with like 40 of them in there. Some of them are the same size, just in short and long, and it's a nightmare. You have to pull it out and you can't read them. That's super handy there, and again, I think you can see the benefits of having it on the wrench. Now, if you did come in and you did do a lot of overlap, like my truck, 2001 Ram, you got metric and SAE all over the place. Yeah, you would have a situation where this same color of blue on the 19 millimeter would be used on a 516, but you can typically eyeball that. You can kind of see they tried to flip the color schemes a little bit. Uh, so like three quarters is going to be that yellow color right down here, and then it's going to be 10 millimeter up at the top. So kind of keep that in mind. Now they do have double-ended uh, open-end jokers, which is kind of cool. Those would both be colored in set. Uh, you can get full sets, you can buy individuals, and of course you can come in and you can actually pick them up with uh, the uh, switch selector, which again, right there, you're adding a bit of a profile. I don't have one, I don't really intend to bring one in, but I am just fine with flipping the wrench personally. It would be nice, but not really for the price increase in my opinion. Uh, right there, they do make some that are offset if you need to go that route or if you really love that. Uh, just a little bit about the angled side, 15 degrees, the joker switch. Uh, you can kind of see there again. I'd love to have one in hand to showcase to you, but that's about it. So, again, this is the perk of me bringing in these catalogs. We can kind of highlight some extra details for you. And about all I know to do now, again, since we've got time to kill in this video, is come in and I'll grab some other um, ratcheting wrenches and some other metric wrenches we can do a direct comparison and then we'll call it good so I will go grab some tools and we'll be right back all right so here we are first thing we're gonna do we're gonna take the 10 millimeter joker and we're gonna compare it to this 10 millimeter husky this husky advertised itself as being a little bit extra length if you will profile wise if you took away that bulge in the middle the husky is just barely thinner uh, it is offset, unlike the Joker, which is straight. And then the Husky does have uh, some extra features in it, just kind of like that flank drive, but not quite to the level of the Joker. Overall, though, I'd have to say the Joker does feel better in hand. It's also balanced. Despite having a ratcheting mechanism, I would say that I could balance it better than the Husky. Uh, that said, these are in total different price ranges as well. Uh, 17 Huskies, same thing. As you can see, it's those two have seen quite a bit of use uh, in the time I've had them, and it's kind of taken a toll. But right there, that is the length difference. And again, these are advertised as extra long, kind of give you extra leverage, if you will. So the Joker is kind of right there with it, not significantly smaller at all. This one, you can kind of see the profile just a little bit better. Uh, it kind of does help with that being black versus the satin finish. So is the Husky standard wrench significantly thinner? Not significant, but it is noticeably 
thinner. I will say that. And again, you can kind of see the flank drive there. Um, nothing too crazy, but we'll possibly throw them on the scale here in a second too. <laughs> so, in fact, let's do that right now. So, I'll just power this sucker up. And let's just grab the 17. We got it set to grams. I think you can see that right there. We're going to call that 217 grams, which works out well because it's easy to remember with a 17 millimeter wrench being 217. That was standard extra length Husky. This is the brand new Vera Joker. Lighter or heavier? How about that? Five grams lighter. This sucker has an 80 tooth rasting mechanism, okay? It's got the uh, plate on the end and it's five grams lighter than the Husky, which was noticeably thinner. Bet you did not anticipate that. Uh, for a scientific approach, since I've got them handy, we're gonna do the 10 and the 10. Let's go ahead, we're gonna take this Husky, throw it down. 63. Now, going by what we saw, do we just assess five grams lighter and say 58? Let's do it and see what we come out with. 67. Okay, so interestingly enough, that's a little bit heavier. Now, I will say, in terms of accuracy on this, I don't know, I got it to weigh screwdrivers and valve stems and stuff, but, you know, we're going to go with what it says, so take that with a grain of salt. Now, a more direct comparison, a little bit better than just the standard uh, Husky wrenches, would be our recent acquisition of these Viha wrenches. Why? Because they are ratcheting. So, uh, this is their 10 millimeter out of the set. Hopefully you can hear that. Again, I never really know until I get in and editing, but if you see this and you hear nothing, just know that it was me trying to showcase the ratcheting sound. I gotta say, the Viha seems a little bit smoother, but I have used this one quite a bit for the short time I've had it. Let's go ahead and throw this back down, see if we get the same reading. 67, so this is at least repeating itself again. This guy was 63 grams, we anticipated 58, it was 4 heavier at 67, so uh, we can take that as a good sign in terms of the accuracy of that, and whether it's super dead on i don't know but it's at least repeating itself which we can consider a win so 67 grams on the viha or vera joker our viha wrench 58 so that sucker is nine grams lighter and it's actually going to be lighter than this one so it's the five that we were looking for uh, kind of interesting to see that play out in front of us now the 19 millimeter this is from viha um I've not used this one, I've used their 17 on what I'm currently working on, the 10, the 13, and the 17. But, you can kind of hear it. Let's go ahead and throw her down. 230 grams. Now, if you recall, this was 217. I said it was easy to remember because it was just two in front of the 17. So, if this is 230 again, which it was, we're going to come in and we're going to see how this one stacks up. significantly heavier 26 grams more than the viha uh, so that's kind of a cool little side note there now closest i have in terms of other things let's go ahead and give you a sound clip here this sounds a bit more precise the viha this seems a little smoother than the 17 in all honesty but this guy right here, I will say, seems to have a little bit more uh, better action than this one. Maybe we'll break it in over time. But we're sitting once again so we can get repeatability. 256 on our 19 millimeter. Capri, three quarter. Sounds pretty solid. 236, 20 grams lighter. Uh, for a comparison here, again, this is standard. Uh, this is three quarter versus 19 millimeter because that's what I have to work with. <laughs> so, you get the idea, they're pretty even uh, in terms of our size comparisons. Now, the Capri, once again, we'll just repeat it. 236, let's see what the X frame is, shall we? So, this is a pretty beefy wrench, I'm not gonna lie. 306, that sucker, despite everything cut out of it, is a heavy freaking wrench. But man, do I love these. These have been super, super good to me. 
and I use them every chance I get again it's not one of those things that looks so good I'm just like awesome check this out and I have it in the toolbox I use these that's what I bought them for and they do see quite a bit of action I've had those the longest as well so uh, that's kind of just some side comparisons some weights some sound effects for you uh, how do we turn that off hold it down yes awesome learning the scale got to throw that in got to throw a catalog at you and i will be the first to admit i could have covered this and probably even the way i ramble on under 10 minutes but i wanted to go ahead since it was all we brought in i can kind of tie this in with sort of an ultimate first impression um will i review these possibly in the future i've got to use them first we got to see how they stack up if they break if they're just I never want to touch the Vihas again, or if I'm like, man, these are so good, goodbye SK, goodbye Capri, we're going all Joker. Uh, all that remains to be seen, but I can tell you this, these things are super, super nice. Uh, the packaging is ridiculously over the top. The whole thing uh, is just, the presentation is second to none, really, when you get right down to it. The pouch is awesome if you're going to take them on the go, if you're going to put them in a mobile box, anything along those lines. If you're just going to keep them in a box or a service cart, not necessarily a huge deal to have that, but you got to admit, it's pretty freaking cool, regardless of if you're going to use it or not. Uh, but again, my only complaint, and this is just off of our initial impressions and assessment, as cool as it is to have this take it easy tool finder, which is, as I've mentioned, pretty dadgum neat. If you were to put these, like our Capri foam tray, if you recall back on that, you've got like one, the one inch that's laid out. Everything else for ease of storage is side profile like that. You don't have that red necessarily visible because it doesn't extend all the way around. That would be my only suggestion moving forward at this point in time. That could change. But I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed by these here initially. I'm excited to use them. Again, that 10 millimeter and 13 are gonna go right to work. I think I was using the 17 on something, some stud by the alternator. But uh, this little pouch though, I gotta say, if you're into this sort of a thing, that's just ridiculous. It's super, super nice. This is insanity to have that i mean you know i would have been fine with just their logo which is actually kind of the same soft rubber if you have any of their stuff like their craft form uh, bits and driver sets it's going to have the same over the top emblem on it that's not just a patch it's like a soft textured 3d type of a deal the wrench is the same way it's it's just really really interesting what they do but that is it man that is our look at the vera jokers finally finally brought some in again and have been on the to-do list for a very very long time and i gotta say i am impressed at least initially we'll see how they hold up based on my other experience with various products i think we're going to be pretty happy with them remains to be seen though don't want to get too far out ahead of the cart <laughs> so we'll put them to use see what we think of them and uh, like i said the only bad thing is if i do love these I'm kind of committed to other tools that we haven't had time to break yet. So we've got the metric Vihas, we've got the SK and Capris, and uh, just, you know, a year ago I didn't have any rationing wrenches, so now we're kind of stacked, and uh, we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> so, if you have used Vera's Jokers, what are your thoughts on them? Did you find them to be useful and innovative? Did you find them to be gimmicky? If you picked them up, are you using them all the time? Have they become your go-to wrench? Or is it a situation where you feel they're too bulky, too heavy, too cumbersome, and you're going with insert your preferential tool here? And by all means, if you've got that and you've got Max or Snap-ons or SK or Capri or VI, whatever, which one would you use? You're in your dream scenario. It's a clean job. Which wrench are you going with and why? So like I said, the biggest complaint people kind of threw at these was sort of their thick profile. This is a 17 standard non-ratcheting Husky. It's not that much thicker. Uh, I don't have my calipers here with me, but uh, this is a 19 millimeter VHA. That is significantly thinner. I'd say that's thinner than the Husky, in all honesty. Now this massive freaking X-frame is significantly thick not significant but i mean noticeably thicker and then the capri which is a little smaller profile i'd say it's just ever so slightly smaller so it's not ridiculously out of line in other words is it thicker than some absolutely but is it just absurd like triple the thickness no is it double no 
And uh, again, this is kind of a wide assortment of stuff. With the Craftsman, it's probably a little thinner than that when you factor in the raised panels. And I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about, but uh, I will quit rambling. I will leave it at that again. Let me know if you like the catalog excerpts being included. In my opinion, most of you don't have the catalogs. Oftentimes online, you're not going to have access to that information anyway, except in bits and pieces. I think it's worthwhile to throw it in because, again, my logic is if you're watching the video, if you're not like, oh, Jokers, I know about them, if you stick with it, you're interested in the Joker and probably because it's either a wish list item or something you've wanted to buy. And the way I look at things is when I want to buy something, I want to know as much about it as I can ahead of time before committing and forking over my hard-earned cash for something I'm going to be disappointed with. It's advantageous for me to come in and say, yep, that stacks up. That's what I want to go with. Let's pull the trigger. So, uh, again, give me your feedback on that. I can always change things. But personally, that's just kind of what I would look for in a video. So, I will leave it at that. I've got a uh, couple more things I want to get cranked out here tonight. And I will catch you back here in the next one.